All right. TCE, Tyler Webb, a.k.a. Kentucky Boy Tyler. Yo. What's um, up? Not much. Just been the soldier. Yes, sir. Just been a soldier the last three weeks. How's your experience been? Three weeks? Holy hell. I thought it's been like two days. <laughs> Went by pretty quick. <laughs> Holy shit. That's crazy. Three weeks. Damn. How was your experience in California, brother? Better than I thought it would be. Oh, well, that's I had good. to be honest. I mean, yeah, you've been you've been chilling. Yeah, a little bit everywhere. Good. Only thing I haven't seen yet was the beach during daytime. Hmm. Which I might try to get around doing, but it's whatever. Know. Venice is pretty cool. I like to go there and people watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Venice is nice. Venice. But uh. Yeah. What was your favorite part here in LA so far? Mm, favorite part? I don't know, just walking outside every day. It being a different, like, not struggle, but just a different experience. No, yeah, just finding your way around and shit. Mm -hmm. I feel that. That's still how it is for me. I've been out here for a year. I moved out here from Kentucky and. I would just get dropped off in the garment district and just fucking walk around all day every day and just figure out where shit was. Mm -hmm. But yeah, still I don't know where I'm at, but figuring it out. All right, so let's hop into the questions. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, what is your favorite part of any creative process from, so I usually label it from start having the original idea mm -hmm. creating the idea mm -hmm. or finishing the product and just looking at the finished product mm -hmm. what might be your favorite stage within the process well the longest stage for me for sure because i have like a million ideas all the time so i just write them down in my notes and then uh i just like refine those ideas or sometimes ideas like morph together or whatever, like the ideas always change and grow. And then my favorite part is just like uh, figuring out uh, what idea should I make next? Like making the story is, is my favorite part. And then of course seeing the shit done is awesome. You know, I mean, making it, it's like, it's like a math equation. Like it's always the same, like, when it's being made. I used to learn a lot from the process. These days, I don't know if I'm learning as much from the process anymore. I have a lot of help with the cut and sew part of it. But um, really just like realizing like how one idea can lead to the next and like different versions of shit like I've been really into. Like uh, not just like having an idea, executing it, and then throwing it away and moving on to the next thing, like really challenging yourself to stick with one idea and like just see how far you can grow that. That's like been mad fun for me. Because mm -hmm. then you end up like you could, every product ends up becoming like so big that like uh, it could be its whole own brand, like just centered around like this kind of product. Like, mm. So that's mad, that's been mad fun. And of course, seeing it finished, you know, is always nice, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I like yeah. to see this shit travel, so honestly, like, it doesn't, nothing sticks around the studio that long. Uh, mm. After it's made, like, you just take a picture of it and get it out there in the world. Now, do you like when someone gets the product and then they give you their reaction to it or what, whatever it may be? Yeah, of course. Well, and even if they don't, like, I just like knowing that people are having, like, life experiences in something I made. You know, it's cool. Like, I don't know. I'm, I was a, definitely when I was younger, I was, like, very sentimental to, like, certain pieces of clothing. You know, like, everyone has their favorite pair of jeans or their favorite hoodie or whatever. And, like, I don't know. You, like, grow attached to certain items. So mm -hmm. if I can make those items, like and someone else is living in them and having those experiences in them and shit. It's like, it's cool. Now, what, and I asked you this beforehand, but what piece might you recollect off the top of your mind that you might have made through a dark time? 
through a dark time? Well, probably like the scariest time, I'm sure for everyone that does what I do is like whenever you first start out, you know? And like, I don't know, like you when you first, first start out, it's like you're kind of just getting into it, but you still have like your normal life. And it's just something you're trying out. And uh, then like you start taking it a little bit more serious, but there's that day where you're like, all right, like, I can't do this relationship anymore. I can't do this school anymore. I can't do this job anymore. I got to get away from these certain amount, like these certain types of people. Like, I don't know. There's just comes a day where it's like, you've realized like everything around you, like you have to change if you're really going to make it work, if you're really passionate about some shit. Um, and so I, I just feel like the pieces in that time of my life for me, it was definitely when I was living in Georgia. Uh, those were like the t-shirt puffer jacket days. So you're so, early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So definitely just like the earliest pieces because that's the scariest time like as a creator because it's like, holy shit, like I just threw away like my whole life to do this, but like this could just like not go anywhere. Mm. And then you have to start all over again. So it's just like when shit's up in the air, it's mad scary, but as long as like you're putting your all into it, and it's something you believe in. Like it's really hard for it to fail because anything you put your all into is just going to be a great product. You know, it's going to speak to someone else. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, fuck. I forgot what I was going to ask next. Um. What's it called? What advice might you give to someone just starting up with designing, creating, whatever it may be? Um, it really just like advice wise, like it just depends on like what you want to do. Like if you want like, um, an exact answer, but I would just say to stay focused, you know, it's like, if you look around at what your friends are doing and shit, because like your friends and your family are like the only people you have to really talk to whenever you first start doing shit. So it's like, they might not get it at first or whatever, but I don't know. If you like what you're doing, then just keep doing it. And uh, just like go go really hard with it, you know? It's like it's so many people like want to do shit because it seems cool. Like there's like the people that are like a, a DJ and a designer and like a pro skateboarder and a fucking graffiti artist and uh I, I don't even and, know, uh, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like, just pick one thing that, like, you really love and see where that takes you. And, you know, if you end up, if it ends up turning into something else, then that's fine, too. Uh, you know, just try to put your all into something, though, you know? Don't just, like, dip your feet into something. And if it all doesn't come at once, like you know, then don't be defeated because like, it's never just gonna fall out of the sky. Like you have to go as hard as possible. So every, let me ask you, what defines a soldier to you? <laughs> what is a soldier in your? A soldier to me, um, uh, so at Broken Back Manufacturing, we call our um, studio core um, soldiers. And um, what makes a true soldier is tolerance. Tolerance above all, you know? Um, because, like, it, obviously, like, I don't have uh, millions of dollars to fucking pay everyone. I don't have, like, a beautiful place for everyone to stay. Uh, you know, you're sleeping on like cots and air mattresses or it's like Jacob and Chris, they're like veteran soldiers. So they're, they share a bed together and I don't know. It's just like, you, you just have to have real tolerance. Like, cause I was a soldier myself, you know, whenever mm -hmm. I was working for Austin. So it's like, I just know, like, if you really want to make something work, like you'll figure it out, like no matter what. So you just have to be really tolerable and like not get like annoyed and shit when like everything isn't perfect because like it's not going to be perfect. 
and it's going to be mad annoying and you're going to work and sleep like weird hours and eat terrible and all these things but it's like as long as you are tolerable and have a strong will to just keep pushing forward uh, towards becoming a veteran then you're you're a soldier Mm -hmm. now you've made every one of your so-called soldiers watch the Tom Sex Mm -hmm. video. Uh, What's it called again? Uh, So two of the first required viewings for any soldier uh, is a Tom Sex. Both are Tom Sex videos. The first one I show everyone is called The Hero's Journey because it's just an easy thing to watch where it's like a basic storyboard, like relatable, like you start out bored then you like want to become a soldier. Then you start working, and you don't know if you're good enough or not, and whatever. It's so, like it just like shows you like all these like self doubt, like uh, insecurities you might be having, like on a TV screen. So you're like, oh shit, okay, we're. And then it just like shows the process of like through tons of hard work, like mastering the craft. And the second video I show everyone is called Ten Bullets because. That's a video that he made for his studio core where it's like basic guidelines. It's like the Ten Commandments of the studio. So it's like basic guidelines you follow while working in someone else's studio. It doesn't have to be like your own guidelines for yourself working on your own shit. But if you're working in someone else's studio, or at at least mine for sure, like those are, I, I really relate to those ethos he has. And before I worked for anyone or anything and I was just working for myself, I found both of those videos and would reference them all the time. Like, some of the rules he says in those videos, like, I I don't know, I feel like they're very literal, but if you take it as, like, a state of mind, then, like, I don't know. They're just powerful. Like one of the bullets is uh, ABK, always be knolling. And to knoll something is just to organize everything um, to the nearest 90 degree angle. So like on a table, you would just organize everything like mad perfect. But if you think about it in a less literal sense, it's like always be knolling. It's just like, you know, always keeping like your mind organized, always keeping your mind straight and everything like that. So I don't know. Those are just two great videos that I show everyone, and uh, yeah, you should definitely watch them. So, the first video, I see a lot of correlation between that and how you run Broken Back Manufacturing, because mm-hmm. you have a person for every task. Mm-hmm. The Hero's Journey video, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, having a person for every task, it's like, whenever people first come in, I can pretty quickly just because I've seen so many people like assess their skill level. So based on what I can kind of tell from that, then I'm, I'm just very good at like pointing people to what they should be doing and when they should be doing it. And I know like how to keep people out of each other's way and just like, I don't know, delegating tasks. Like I'm pretty good at. No, you have, Two full-time soldiers at the studio. Three. Three? Yeah. So there's Jacob, mm-hmm. a.k.a. Felix. Yep. And Chris. Yep. And Travis. Travis, no. Yep. So Jacob, he does most of the... Well, all three of those guys, Jacob, Chris, Travis, the goats, they, uh, they do all the cut and sewing. Now, Chris specializes in pattern making. He's, like, my best pattern maker. But both the other boys can make patterns, too. It's just Chris's, like, favorite thing to do is pattern making. Yeah. But all three of them do the cut and sew. So, basically, at Broken Back Manufacturing, I have those three guys uh, making all the samples and runway looks and stuff. And then, like, once I get to a final production or a final sample of an item... Then I'll take it to a factory and get it manufactured. Um, 
but honestly, like, I don't even really do that that often. Like, it's mostly like I just sell like small production runs made in the studio because yeah. it's just like specialty fabrics. Like, I'm the one making the fabric every day and shit. So, you know. When do you think, as a younger designer, you should get something manufactured? Uh, once you understand the product you're getting manufactured. Mm -hmm. So I definitely think like you should work hands on with stuff and like figure out like every part of how something works. Like I never even wanted to like be the person sewing and stuff. Like I thought robots made everything. I didn't know like people actually sewed shit. Like I thought just like moms did that as a hobby. Mm -hmm. But um, then I learned like, yes, people do sew this shit and there's like a whole art and craft to it. So once I really got into that process, which I never, like, when I first wanted to make shit, I never expected myself to get into that side of it. But once I really dove into that, like, that's when, like, I thought about clothing and products and everything completely different. And that, like, shifted my whole outlook on everything. And uh, I just think it's a really important thing that you know every step of making the product that you want to have made. Because then you can control it more. Um, you don't feel like it's so up in the air. Uh, you know what to expect. You know what questions to ask. You know how much things should cost. Just do your research and try making something on your own first. Even if it sucks. Like, if it's the worst, like, quality sewing and everything, like, who cares? Like, at least you know what goes into it. So then you know how to talk to these factories. Like, mm -hmm. a factory... A manufacturer can tell in two seconds if you know what you're talking about or not. So if they can tell you don't know what you're talking about, like they're just going to bait and switch you or take advantage of you or mm -hmm. whatever. So just know your shit before you make it. Got you. Now, how might you describe your style? My style, like uh, the stuff that I make. How because do you dress? How I dress? Yourself. Yeah. I feel like I dress, like, way more simplistic than the stuff I make. Like, all my favorite designers, like, like, Margiela and Rick Owens and shit, like, I don't even, I wouldn't even wear, like, a lot of their clothes. I just appreciate their clothes from, like, a design standpoint. Like, I know how hard some of those patterns are to make. I know how hard, like, this fucking pleat and a pair of pants was or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I, like, appreciate it from a design standpoint. But personally, like, I wouldn't wear most of the shit. I'm just, like, a jeans and t-shirt kind of guy. Um, even, like, my own stuff. Like, I'm wearing these pants right now that I made. But this is probably the craziest thing I've made that I've actually worn. Like, yeah, I, my I, personal I, style is pretty simplistic. Like, just fucking, like, I don't know. Whatever shoes I'm wearing for the six months at a time jeans and a different t-shirt every day i could stare at these jeans all day yeah i'm not even gonna lie no yeah, these pants are crazy uh this is the t-shirt camo the t-shirt burrow in a uh, camo and this is the first cargo pant signature cut uh that i made out of this pattern so i like the fit of them a lot so i'm gonna make a bunch more stuff out of this pattern this was like really last minute but it turned out mad nice. I ran jackets like this a long time ago, so I'm excited to see the pants. So you, what might be the craziest fashion related story you have or that you could think of off the top of your head? There's a bunch, just like people that I've met that I never thought I would meet. Uh. The craziest shit that happened in the past year was I snuck into the Louis Vuitton show. So it was like Virgil's last show. Um, everyone uh, found out that he passed away. And then like the next day, Louis Vuitton announced that they were going to do their show still in Miami. So I just booked a flight to Miami. The address for the show wasn't like public. The show obviously wasn't public. This shit was on like a barge, like on a boat in the water and shit. And so sneaking into that shit was like 
some James Bond shit. It was insane. I had to go full Spy Kids mode, but I made it and I saw the show and it was sick. And, uh, you know, there isn't going to be like another truly iconic moment that's like more iconic than that show, you know, Virgil's last show. So I just knew I had to be there. And he would have wanted kids to sneak in and shit. When I first met Virgil a few years earlier, it was in Miami. So it was cool. That was like the craziest thing that's happened, uh, I don't know, recently. I've just been like kicking it at the studio, you know? I haven't yeah. been linking anyone, so. But that was sick. So, last couple of questions. Yep. Um, shit. There's a lot of questions, but. Um, fuck. I want to check. I, I was trying not to check the notes. You're good. How old are you, if you don't mind me asking? I'm 24. 24. Yep. I forget all the time if I'm 23 or 24, but it was officially discovered that I was 24. So. Do you feel like you're younger than most people doing what you're doing? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I feel like all the kids I see on Instagram are like my age or even younger. Like, mm -hmm. it's all these like DIY scene kids, like doing their thing, you know? So. You're going pretty head to head though, get like with all the pieces you make against like designer brands like yeah yeah the, see yeah so i'm trying to take i'm trying to take my clothes in a much more like fashion house mm -hmm. stance than like a streetwear brand or like a diy instagram page or some shit like that like i'm presenting my pieces now like in full looks of like 10 to 20 like looks at a time which is like it's really hard to do because doing the runway shit it's the least profitable clothes that I make, mm -hmm. the most time consuming, the most like tactile, like technical pieces. Uh, everything about it is the hardest, you know, and the least profitable. So to stay alive and survive, it's like, I understand why people sell the shit that they sell, just stacking cash, you know, and then everyone thinks like, oh, after I stack a bunch of cash, then I'll do all the hard designer shit, but it's like, once you start stacking cash like that, it's so hard to go back and do the hard work. Like, so mm. I'm just doing all the hard work first and learning everything there is to learn first. And uh, I just feel like, I mean, it's personally, it's my favorite part of it is the runway looks. Like whenever I have to do a drop and everything, like I'm mad hyped to make the first products that I show, but then to run production runs of everything, it's like, Fuck, it gets, like, terrible, you know? Just mm -hmm. because, like, time's ticking and you've made the same piece a hundred times. And, I mean, I make every piece, like, a little different. So, like, it's always sick. And it's always sick to know it's going to travel and stuff. But just, like, no pressure of doing uh, something for a lookbook. There's, like, no time stamp, like, I, or uh, no deadline, I mean, that I have to meet. And it's just, like, I can just do the craziest shit possible. I know, like... Oh, if I only make one of these, who cares? I don't like. I don't even have to sell it if I don't want to. Like, I can just show it. So, the runway stuff's definitely my favorite, and I want to take my brand in a more fashion house approach. Um, so, in that, in that words, yeah, I guess like all the people that you know are creative directors at fashion houses and shit, they're mad old. But uh, I don't know. I never really think about it. You know, I respect all those guys like it's mad hard and no one started a fashion house in a in a really long time like all these fashion houses like balenciaga christian dior all this shit like the real people like cristobal balenciaga for example like he was dead before we were alive you know like None of these guys that are creative directors at these brands like had to go through the process of starting the brand, learning the business side, doing all these things. Now, they might have like gone to school or interned for people and learned those things too. They're really important things to know. But I feel like I'm definitely uh, one of the first 
DIY kids, so to say, that's taking it straight to like a fashion house approach of things. So just like doing the DIY shit drops monthly and everything to survive, pay for rent and get the soldiers food and shit. But uh, also doing like full lookbook collections, like in between time, mm-hmm. like so. I don't know. I want to make it something different, something special, and it's just like what I enjoy doing. So, mm-hmm. gonna keep it cranked. Your stuff stands out than most designer stuff. I just gotta say it. Thank you. you. Know? Thank you. It's hard not to notice like the things you make, especially. I appreciate. You know, it. like Balenciaga, their vibe right now is all black, mm-hmm. right? You know, I like color. Mm-hmm. I'm a big color guy. Um, but speaking of runways, mm-hmm. you got something big coming up, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think I'm gonna try to do my first runway show, like probably at like the end of September, October or something. But uh, it's gonna be a soft show, so it won't be like open to the public. It'll have a mad small audience, just like family and friends. But like the bigger, it's for something bigger, like. Mm-hmm. Uh, the main runway thing that like I'm showing will be in video format. So the soft show is just kind of like a practice, and I'll get some footage from it for the video. But just expect like a huge video, kind of just like Kentucky Boy Tyler introduction to the world type thing. Because like I don't know, it's weird. Like I don't really do any interviews or like YouTube videos or anything to like show me my world like as a whole like i live it every day so i forget like people don't know like how hectic and crazy this shit is like yeah and then until someone new like comes into the world and then i'm like holy shit like Mm. i forgot like i forgot like how crazy it is so i definitely think people would enjoy maybe like seeing some of that you know some so behind the scenes or I mean behind the scenes but like what I have planned will just like show it all as a whole but still like in an artistic manner like it's not just going to be like some behind the scenes footage type thing like it's going to be some real nuance like just beautiful uh setup type thing All right that's I it appreciate you appreciate you brother thanks for coming out Thanks for having me. Thanks for letting me stay at the studio. Oh, yes, of course. Anytime. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. I appreciate it.